Digital Cisco Live US 2020 Network Design and CCDE Focused Sessions, Episode 51. Welcome back, my friends, nerds, geeks, and ziglets out there. It has been way too long. Today, I have another episode of the Zigbits Network Design Podcast, where zigabytes are faster than gigabytes. As always, my goal is to provide you with real-world context around technology. I'm your host, ZigZiga. Welcome back to the show. It has been way too long. I appreciate you all for listening and watching. If you're watching on the video, if you're listening on the podcast, I extremely appreciate it. So today's show is all about the Cisco Digital Live event that's happening this week. It's starting today, June 16th, and then it's going to go until tomorrow, June 17th. But we have a lot to cover. So today's goal is to give you a quick rundown of the events that are happening this week and the schedule of sessions releasing that's happening over the course of the next three to four months. And then finally, what are those ZigBits network design and CCDE focused sessions? Okay, without any further ado, we're going to just kick it right off as always. So the the Digital Cisco Live US 2020 event, right? Couple of call outs to make. The first call out is that the Cisco Live content team made some changes to how the session IDs are going to be for all sessions this event. Because it's a digital event, they wanted to make a distinction between an on-site event and a digital event. So all session IDs are going to have a prepended value or identifier that means digital event. And when we show the session names and their session IDs, you'll see what I'm talking about. But just as you're aware, it's going to be the same session as before in some cases, but with an extra identifier, which means that it's been re-recorded and re-edited and content has been added to that session. All right. Now, the big, big call out to make before we kick things off is a huge thank you and just give them praise. The Cisco Live content team has really done an outstanding, outstanding job this year. I can't even explain it in terms that we would all understand because I don't even know all the work that's involved. I only know a fraction of the work that's involved, but let me just put it in perspective, right? So it normally takes a year, a year and a half for the Cisco Live content team to schedule and, and, and kick off a physical on-site Cisco Live. So a year, maybe a year and a half. They did the, the digital event. They did this digital event in eight weeks. Eight weeks. And that's including all of the marketing, all of the sessions, all the recordings, all the editing, all the schedules. Everything got done in eight weeks. So just think of that when we go through this and how much work was involved. All right. So that the Cisco Live content team, cheers to you. Thank you for all that you do for this event and this community. I I can't thank you enough. All right. So we're going to break up the conversation around Cisco Live, uh, the event, the digital event today. We're going to break it up into the broadcast event and then the um, on-demand library event, if you will. So the broadcast event, it starts today, June 16th, and it goes until tomorrow, June 17th. There's a whole bunch of sites on Cisco.com that you can go and find. I think it's CiscoLive.com about the broadcast and the event details. And they're going to be in the show notes and I'll have them in the the YouTube description as well. If you want to just go ahead and click them and and see all the information. So I'm just going to summarize a couple of things, right? The broadcast event um, is going to have four different unique channels that you can choose from. If you're registered, you can go ahead and choose from four unique channels throughout the day. And across those two days, there's gonna be roughly about 40 sessions. There might be a little bit more, a little bit less, but 40 sessions across two days, that's a lot of sessions, right? For two days worth of content. Um, And you have the choice to do what you kinda wanna do throughout those two days. Um, I definitely would say, look at the agenda, find the sessions that mean the most to you, and really register for them, Register for them um, because it means a lot, right? That, that you gotta you gotta register for the events you want. Um, as we're talking about registration, 
you can register the same way that we used to register um, for the on-site events. Um, you can take the app on their mobile device and you can register and, and do your scheduling that way as well, even though it's a digital event. So you can still register the exact same way. So I wanted to call out a couple, a handful of the broadcast sessions that I wouldn't miss. So just some things, if you're going through the list, these are some of the key ones I just wouldn't miss. Okay, so day one, June 16th today, I would not miss Chuck's keynote, Possibilities, right? It's all about possibilities. And I think it's extremely fitting with what's going on in the world today. So I think make some time for his keynote. I think it's extremely important for us to be a part of what he's doing. The next thing I have on the list, and these aren't in any specific order, just so we're clear. It's not like they're a priority order. I just put them like this uh, on the show notes. So five for five. Um, I know the speakers. I know a couple of the speakers are in this session, and it is going to be an amazing live session. So five innovations shaping the future of networking. Um, in our careers, in IT, in networking, we have to constantly learn things every day every single day. Uh, so we have to be innovated. We have to be thinking outside the box. And this is that that, that session that you're not going to want to miss. It's going to be thinking outside the box. It's going to be talking to people that, that really are, are making leaps and bounds in the industry. This session's happening a couple times on different channels. So you have the four channels, you got a couple of options. So make sure you go through your session and pick the right time that works the best for you. The third one here for day one is disruption. Disruption mindset shift. Now, if you follow me and you've been listening to my podcast and YouTube content and presentations for years, the, your mindset is extremely important. You have to shift your mindset. Uh, like the network design, for example, you have to shift your mindset and think about the business versus the technology. Well, a disruption mindset is so important. I would make time for that session. I don't think it's a very long session. I don't, I think it's about 30 minutes, but seriously, don't miss that session. The last one on day one is multi-cloud and networking for ACI and NXOS. Now, I always got to say this, this comment, right? I try very hard every year to make this list vendor agnostic. I don't, I don't want to, have a whole bunch of vendor solutions that, okay, well, why do I care about this? I'm looking for design things and not vendor things, right? Uh, and things is the best word I could think of. You're looking for design, architecture, and, and understanding of how to design a solution, but you're not looking for a Cisco-specific solution, right? Or whatever vendor name, right? Um, there's going to be a couple of sessions that I call out today that are going to have Cisco solutions, and it's not because... Um, I want to highlight a Cisco solution. Um, I want to highlight an architecture. I want to highlight why is that architecture important? Not that it's a Cisco solution, All right? So this is one of those multi-cloud networking for ACI and XOS. Less focused about ACI and XOS, more focused on multi-cloud networking, right? And data center fabrics, that's the key. You got to build multiple data center fabrics and that's going to create clouds. And how do you connect those clouds together? Right? How do you connect those clouds together? Right? That's the end of day one. Now there's a whole bunch of other sessions that you can sign up for. Those are the four things that I would prioritize on day one. That's today. For day two, June 17th, which is tomorrow, I would not miss the keynote, The New World is Now. That's going to be a very informative keynote. I just wouldn't miss it. And it's pretty much on every channel anyway. Then the next thing I would look at is the IT transformation, enabling business agility. Now, anything about me, I want to key on business talk always. So if there's a lecture, a case study, a use case about business, some sort of enabling the business or business priorities or business outcomes, I want to catch that and I want to watch it. So this is extremely valuable, I feel like. It may not be as technical as we're used to. If we're really down in the, way, the weeds, we're typing away at the keyboard on the CLI, right? But we have to bring everything back to the business always. And this is one of the things 
This is one of those important concepts to, like, to bring it back to the business. And this is one of those sessions that you're going to do that with. The next one here, number three, unleashing innovation with 5G and Wi-Fi 6. So I added that one here because um, 5G and Wi-Fi 6 have been a big debate for a while. And that's not the point for me to get into that debate right now if it's if it's needed or not needed, etc. Um, it is a shift in the market. And I think this is the beginning of that to see how that's going to change how companies potentially do business, right? So there's a lot of capabilities that, that come with 5G and Wi-Fi 6, and it may not be the end-all be-all, but right now there's a lot of capabilities that come with it. So I think that's important for us to go through. All right, the fourth thing, the final thing for day two is this next generation SP transport network architecture. Now, if you're, if you're learning network design, right, SP technologies are traditionally harder to learn and harder to find. Um, use cases, for example, migrations, mergers, divestations, they're harder to find SP related use cases on those topics on our day to day work. It's easier to find um, use cases in the enterprise space or the commercial space, um, migrating from IGPs like EIGRP to OSPF or, or whatever you might have, BGP designs, route reflectors, some of the basic MPLS things. But a lot of the SP service provider related designs are hard to come by. This is a perfect example of something that you want to latch onto and learn as much as you can about it. Again, these are just the four I picked out of each day. So and these aren't set in stone. These are just what I would choose if I was choosing a schedule. All right. Um, and feel free to take those and, and, you know, put them in your schedule or, you know, hey, maybe you have something that's more important for you. And that is fine. Right. That is totally fine. You have to be your own kind of guide as well. All right. All right. So that's the broadcast event at a high level. So let's go into the on demand event. So on-demand event is going to be June 18th. So not today, June 16th, not tomorrow, June 17th, the following day. So Thursday, June 18th. So what is happening, right? So normally at Cisco Live, we have around a thousand sessions, technical sessions, breakout sessions that you can all attend and go to. Now they fill up fast, etc. There's 30 minutes, or no, there's no 30 minutes. I think there's 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes. So two hours. So to mitigate this, we have three release cycles or schedules or waves, whatever you want to call it. We have three release waves. Release one is happening this Thursday, June 18th. Release two is happening July 15th. And then release three is going to happen in sometime in September. We don't know the exact date yet. Once we know, it'll get published, and then we'll, we'll all talk about it, right? So you have three releases and across those releases are going to be a ton of sessions, a number of sessions, but I'm seeing a ton of sessions that are going to, they're going to get published. So as these speakers, these content creators are recording their sessions and, and doing demos and adding an intro or adding an extra added benefit or, or freebie at the end of their session from last year, um, once they're done, it's going to go into one of these cycles and then you're going to get that content for free. Uh, this is a great benefit, right? A um, couple things to call out, right? So come this Thursday, there are going to be over 200 sessions for you to choose from. New sessions in the content on-demand library a catalog for you to search for and find and watch. Um, now, I will say the number is about 219. I think I had it wrong here. Um, I think I had it at 221. I think a couple sessions got nixed. But the point is that there's over 200 sessions. And again, this was only in eight weeks. These are speakers. These are content creators that created their sessions in the last eight weeks and got them produced and out there. All right. And I would say on average, these speakers spent at least 50 hours on these sessions. So a lot more work went, in, went into creating these sessions this year. A lot more work, uh, time, effort, energy, um, passion went into creating these sessions this year. So just keep that in mind. As you go through the content, as you find those sessions, you're going to see all that work that was put into them. All right. So before we get into the specific 
CCDE and network design sessions, I always want to highlight my session just a real quick. So my sessions traditionally BRK RST-2044. And it's all about multi-home internet edge architectures. Right? So we have enterprise of the title too, but it's multi-home internet edge architectures. So for this event, as an example, it's going to be a digital version and it's going to have an identifier at the beginning, DGTL. So DGTL-BRKRST-2044. That's a mouthful, but it'll work. Um, so that session of mine is launching this Thursday as well, June 18th. Um, I will say I recorded over, or well, close, not over. I recorded close to 20 demos. Um, some of them raising, ranging from three to five minutes all the way up to 10 to 15 minutes in chunks that really make sense and call outs and uh, a whole bunch of things. So I demoed a whole bunch of things out, um, case studies and use cases and you name it. Um, and they're in my session. In addition to that, everything is on GitHub as always. So again, I have my same GitHub repository, even though the session ID is different, it's still using the same GitHub. Still using the initial configurations and the final configurations for everything and the topology. So I'm going to just browse real quick to the GitHub repository just so you can see it. All right. So here I am in the GitHub repository, right? And this is github.com mziga slash brkrst-2044. And you will see here that there are a number of folders and whatnot. If we scroll down here, there's our reference topology. So you can see the reference topology that I've created for this session. You can see all the different kind of case studies. CDS, Common Deployment Scenario, is an identifier. And that's case study one through four. And there's a folder for every case study. There's also a final configurations folder, an initial configurations folder, and of course, a, a topology, right? A lab topology guide. Let's just go on one of these folders real quick and show you what you see, okay? So here's a specific topology for common deployment scenario one, a whole bunch of wording. And then as you can see throughout here, there's a whole bunch of screenshots and explanations on everything we're doing. So you can go to CiscoLive.com, right? Go to the on-demand library, find the session, my session. You can watch the videos with all the demos. You can uh, pause it, play it. Um, whatever you want to do, right? Then you can go over here, you can download the topology file, download all the configurations, and you can run everything that's in my session uh, on your own environment at, at home. You can do a GNS3 with uh, CML, whatever you want to use it, you can do it. Um, yeah, just trying to give you guys more content, right? More stuff to leverage. But that is there if you want to leverage it, so... All right, that's enough about my session, right? So let's go into the meat of what we're going to talk about today, right? So what we're specifically talking about, I had to check the time, sorry. Um, what we're specifically going to talk about today is our network design and CCDE focused sessions, right? That's that's what we're come, coming down to. We do it every year. And, and actually, we're going to do this for every release this year, right? So instead of it doing it once, we're going to do it three times. We're going to do it now, this week. We're going to do it in July once we have the session list. And then we're going to do it in September. And that way we have a kind of a, a what's the word? We're going to have a, a wave approach, just like Cisco Live is having a wave approach or a release schedule. We're going to have a release schedule specifically for the network design and CCD focused sessions. All right. All right. So out of the roughly 220 sessions in release one, again, that is coming this Thursday. There's 19 sessions that fit my network design and CCD buckets that, that my requirements um, to be focused heavily on design. So <clears throat> the first one in this list is DGTL, that identifier, BRK ACI-2125, ACI multi-site architecture and deployment. Again, please don't get confused. Don't get, don't get hung up on ACI, right? ACI is there. When you see ACI, I want you to think of software-defined data center in the vendor agnostic term. So I don't care if it's ACI. I don't, I don't care, right? What I care about is multi-site architecture. How do you configure and deploy a multi-site architecture? How do you design it, right? So that's data center focused, but that, that's extremely important. How do you design a multi-site architecture? All right, the next one is DGTL-BRKSPG-2000. 
or 2000. So this is going to be service provider focused and that's going to be congestion avoidance, mitigation and capacity concerns for cable subscribers. Um, I look at this as more of like an ISP focused session. And again, I'm going to jump at those, right? We don't get our hands on ISP tech or ISP use cases that often. Um, so if we can do it, let's do it. And, and this is going to give you some good understanding of congestion avoidance, um, mitigation, how to handle mitigation strategies, etc. All right, the next one's actually a case study. So this is DGTL and it's BRK COC, which is Cisco on Cisco, and it's 4263. So this is inside Cisco IT, so our own IT organization at Cisco, and this is deploying SD-WAN and SDA, the SQL. <clears throat> now, you're probably asking, Zig, why are you covering this? Because there's a whole bunch of Cisco solutions, SD-WAN and SDA, et cetera. Yes, you're right. So I'm, I'm, I'm selecting this because it's a case study. It's a use case, not because it's a Cisco technology thing. It's more of, hey, someone's doing this in production and I want you to know how to do this. I want you to see it. I want you to interact with it. I want you to see how if they're doing policy integration between these two fabrics, how are they doing the policy integration? Because that is a big question today. And that's important from a design perspective. They may not be on the CCDE, but we need to know how to design for that. We need to. All right, the next one, DGTL-BRK-SPM-2013. Next generation mobile enterprise 5G, private LTE, and Wi-Fi 6. So Wi-Fi and cellular. Again, those are big bucket items. Uh, everyone's trying to move to that 5G, private LTE, Wi-Fi 6 area right now. And how do you solve for that, right? How do you design for that? How do you design for scale? Um, think of like a like what I call high dense and high demand Wi-Fi architectures. So a high high dense would be a whole bunch of devices. So like maybe a stadium, like a sporting stadium. Uh, high demand would be a whole bunch of data. Lots of traffic, a lot of bandwidth, right? So maybe a sporting stadium, but there's, you know, they're hosting some sort of course. I don't know. But there's there's other examples. But you get the idea, right? High demand, high bandwidth, high high density, high demand. That's what fall in that bucket. Next one is DGTL, PSO IoT 1203. I put this one here specifically because it bridges the gap between IoT and zero trust. And I think zero trust is an extremely important type topic to discuss and understand. Um, I happen to talk about zero trust a lot in my role at Cisco on a daily basis with my customers. So I know a lot about zero trust. I may not be a leading expert in it, but I just talk about it with my customers a lot. So when I see zero trust here, I'm always like, hey, you need to, you need to learn zero trust. So, um, and from a security standpoint, it's really revolutionizing how we do things. So definitely this is a great example of what to do. Um, focus on it. And I think it's got, a mapping of zero trust to the business. And I think that was even a better option than just zero trust by itself because you have business objectives. So you're going to, you're going to highlight the business priorities, the business outcomes, um, and goals, right? Um, and you're mapping zero trust to those. All right, so the next one is DGTL and it's PSO CX-1238 and it's best practices for deploying large scale IoT devices. Now I added this one here and it's specifically IoT, but I added it here because it's a large scale IoT. So I look at that as maybe like a, a transport system, like a maybe a, a highway transport for a state where you have IoT devices all over the place or a city or maybe even like traffic lights at a, at a city. So all the traffic lights might have IoT sensors. Um, you're thinking like a large scale IoT. Airports might have a whole bunch of IoT. Um, I think those would be some good examples. All right, next one is DGTL and it's BRK OPT, so optical, and that's 2007, sorry, 2007, there we go. Slurring my numbers. Um, this is beyond gray optics as DWDM 101 for IP engineers. I usually every year include DWDM if it's, if it's a session, I usually include it. And the reason why I include it is because there's not a lot of opportunity for us as network engineers and architects and designers to get our hands on DWDM 
or its predecessor CWDM. Um, I mean, even even my 19 years in the industry, um, I've had I've had some experience with it here and there. I've never deployed it myself, but I've had um, I've outsourced the deployment um, through like partners or service engagements. So I definitely have designed it and architected it and I've learned it, but I have not actually been on the physical devices that do it, the ONS gear and whatnot. So I just, I add this one every year because I think it's a, it's a lost, lost kind of technology. Most people don't know it. And I think you need to know it from a design perspective. You definitely need to know it from a CCDE perspective. DWDM comes on the CCD a lot, I think. <clears throat> I don't know. So don't, don't quote me. So. <laughs> Uh, the next one is DGTL, and that's BRKDCN3378. So the Building Data Center Networks with VXLAN BGP EVPN. This is probably one of the most important sessions I could find. Um, VXLAN and EVPN are things that you need to know. They're technologies that you must know. And there's nothing in there that's Cisco-specific. It's not ACI. You know, it's not, not NXOS. It's a VXLAN and EVPN. So this is really important for us as network designers to really know the ins and outs of VXLAN and EVPN. Yeah. All right, the next one here is also data center. It's DGTL, it's BRKDCN, and it's 2218, data center designed for mid-size enterprise. So this one's here because it's all about design, right? So the other one before it was all about specific technology, VXLAN, EVPN. This one is specifically about design, data center in a mid-size enterprise. So we want to get those key studies. We want to get that information, right? All right, the next one is my session. <laughs> DGTL BRKRST-2044 Enterprise Multi-Home Internet Edge Architectures. Again, Internet Edge Architectures, you need to know how to design for it, right? You need to know how to do traffic engineering. How do you handle traffic coming back into your environment? How do you handle traffic leaving your environment? How do you handle symmetry issues between data centers, et cetera? And you get all of that in that session. All right, I'm gonna scroll down here. All right, we're getting closer to the, the other half here. So that was mine. The next one here is B, uh, DGTL BRK ENS 2200, Extended Enterprise Network. We're gonna design, deployment, and best practices. So that's for EN, ANT enterprise focused, but that is extremely important. All right, so the next four, are all introductions, right? Intro, introduction. So we got intro to EIGRP, we got intro to OSPF, we got introduction to IP multicast, and we have introduction to MPLS, right? I put all these here just in the case you don't know these protocols. Maybe you're starting the network design journey now. I would definitely take these intro courses, right? I know all the speakers for all of these and they're great speakers and they do this for a living. These guys can present. So intro to EIGRP, that's BRKENT-1102. Intro to OSPF is 1103. Introduction to IP multicast, uh, that is BRKIPM-1261. And obviously, introduction to MPLS, a totally different identifier, DGTL, BRK MPL, which is MPLS, and it's dash 1100, right? If you know MPLS, don't go to the MPLS one. Don't, don't prioritize it, right? Don't watch it. If you know multicast, don't go to the multicast one. Me personally, I was in the multicast session, this multicast session in Europe um, with Tim. And it was by far the best way I've ever learned multicast. Like he retaught multicast to me. I was in there to help him uh, as a as a facilitator, if you will, to help him um, with his Teams room, WebEx Teams room. And um, yeah, I, I was learning in the room with him. It was really great. So if, if you don't know multicast or if you're a little questionable about multicast, definitely watch his videos. All right, next one is DGTL BRK MPL-2205. And this one is, is another good one because this is all about migrating, migrating. And you don't see this in a real world situation that often, right? Unless you're in a service provider and you're like the architect and you're actually designing the solution, you're not going to really see this. So this is migrating from MPLS TE, so traffic engineering, to segment routing. So you're taking your MPLS TE tunnels, and you're transitioning everything into segment routing. So what do you do about LDP? Do you need LDP? What are you doing? Are you running segment routing TE? Like I don't, are you doing SR TE? What are you doing? Like this is, this is definitely something I would watch. Okay. Two left. 
So this next one is DGTL and it's BRKCLD3440. And this is multi-cloud network design and deployment. Again, another cloud related one, multi-cloud. Uh, everything is moving to cloud these days, everything. So let's, let's, you know, get to cloud. Let's do the cloud stuff that we need to do. And we're going to make it multi-cloud. You know, if you're using AWS or Azure, how do you get them to work together? Right? Maybe you have some workloads in AWS. You have some workloads in Azure. Well, that's multi-cloud right there, right? How do you tie them together and instantiate policies end to end? These are things that you have to ask. How do you do that, right? Like that's, I don't know. That's, that's the question you have to ask. All right, this last session is a brand new session this year. I know the speaker pretty well. So it's DGTL BRKRST 2337. It's OSPF deployment in modern networks. Again, I love sessions where we get a clear view of how things are being done today, right? And it's none of this fake stuff, right? It's it's real, it's raw. Um, and, and when I say real and raw, if it fails, it fails and we learn from it. Like that, that's that's important. Learning from failure is more important than succeeding all the time. All right, that's our, our, our network design CCD focused session list for the first wave of Cisco Live US 2020, the digital event, right? So that's the first wave, first release. We'll do a, a second one in July and we'll do a third one in September. And then maybe we'll have a follow on one to kind of come combine them all. I don't know how it's going to look, right? It's too early to tell. All right, so our call to actions. We have a few things going on. A few things going on over here. We're trying to get back on the game, trying to get back on, on our schedule of building out content and whatnot. So the first call to action is that we now have a Zigbits email list. I mentioned it in November last year. Yes, I said November. It's been a while. I mentioned it in February this year. I think it was February. It might have been January. But I mentioned it in February or January. And then it fell off the radar. Well, it's up now. The Zigbit's email list is up and operational. So what does that mean for you? And that means that if you want to stay in the know, if you want to know about all the new content that we're creating, um, if you want to be a part of, uh, of me creating new content, like that's, that's important, right? So I'm asking questions to the email list. I have email, I have subscribers on the email list today. Um, and I'm asking questions because they're a sounding board. You can be a part of that process, right? So I asked, uh, what did I ask? Like, I'm always real and raw and transparent. Um, I did a free gift, uh, a guide to uh, the benefits of SD-WAN, right? In a vendor agnostic form. So I'm not talking about Cisco specific or some other vendor. It's benefits of SD-WAN in a vendor agnostic form. It's a free gift giveaway. It's a couple pages. I think it's six pages long. Well, once you subscribe, Right, you get that for free. Um, you have to give me your first name and email address, right? <clears throat> Maybe that's a little shady. I don't know. Let me know. I'm not trying to be shady at all. You give me your email address and I follow up saying, Hey, I hope you like this. I have some questions. I hope you don't mind. Here's my question. Um, you know, I'm toying with the idea of doing a SD WAN benefit, the benefits of SD WAN course to show. And now that's not going to be like an intro to SD WAN. No, that's going to be like, Okay, here's a couple SD-WAN vendors. Let me show you the benefits of SD-WAN in their solutions, right? And I would show the same benefits in both or three or whatever solutions so you could see the benefits, right? I'm asking the email members on my, my list um, those questions. Like, is this a good idea? Would you like this idea? Do you think you would find value in this? Um, you know, I'm also asking things about, Hey, would you like to do some sort of network of fundamentals course? Would you like to do some sort of ebook? Um, what free content would you like? Right. It's all about free content too. It's not just about the paid stuff. Like what, what do you need today? Right. Um, someone wanted CCD tips. Like, so what is some CCDE tips that I can provide, which I actually did a podcast on that before. So that's easy. I could grab that and send it to them. Um, but what, what I could help you, right? That's the, that's the intent. I'm rambling like always. So I ramble or what my boss at work calls it. Zamble. <laughs> Zig is rambling. All right. So the email list is up and running. It's operational. If you want to join it directly on the email list, it's a Zigbits. It's actually, uh, not Zigbits. It's pages.zigbits. 
uh, dot tech uh, slash email dash list. And the easiest way is just to go here. Here's that link. Here's the page, pages.zigbits.tech slash email dash list. That's where you're going to go. The link will be in the show notes. So if you want to join, just click the link. It'll get you here and to your first name and, and email address, and you'll be good to go. All right, so there's that email list, number one. Number two. The Zigbits resource page is live. I know, I can't believe it. What does that mean for you, right? So what that means is I'm gonna I'm gonna create this resource page. Well, it's already created. This resource page is uh, a place for me, for you really, not for me, but it's a place where you can access everything. Um, so anything that's created ever, if that's a, um, a free something, a freebie, a freebie Friday, which I'm calling it. Um, that's a free item, a gift or whatever you want to call it, uh, something I'm giving away for free. It'll be listed there. If it happens to be a paid for item, it'll be listed there. Um, if it's a reference or a recommendation, it'll be listed there. I'm literally just going to create a massive site page, whatever you want to call it, that has everything you could think of that I would ever recommend, create, uh, or give away. So that is what that is. That's the resource page. And that's going to be zigbits.tech slash resources. And I could show that real quick. It's right here. And as you can see here, we already have a guide there. We have a, our network design scenario. Yes, that is something else I gave away. I gave away my mag energy network design CCD scenario last week. So those are two free giveaways I gave away. Again, that's, I'm calling it freebie Friday, freebie Friday. And I will continually give things away as I create them. I can't guarantee it will be every Friday. It's a lot of work to create things. So give me some time and I'll add some more stuff. I have ideas. I have ideas, just need time, right? Just need the time. All right, so that's that one, right? So that's the resource page live, freebie Fridays. Uh, we have some. We have two free resources already. So if you didn't see the social media links, those are out there. They're on the show notes today and they will also be on the resources page. All right, the last call to action or just general notes, right? That's no call to action for you, really. A private cloud, <clears throat> excuse me, a private cloud and DCI webinar series. So my good friend, Mohammed Radwan and I started a webinar series. Uh, we did the first episode a couple weeks ago. I have the sessions, uh, the recording of the session linked in the show notes so you can see it. Um, and we really just talked for about data center how users, customers can get back into your data center if you're hosting content, um, and then how your users can get out to other content outside of your data center, and then how they get back. If you have symmetry problems, NAT, not NAT, IPv6, um, steering of traffic, right? Depending on the situation, it can get pretty complex um, in some cases. But we talked about all those things. Uh, I think we even talked about DMVPN at one point, services, load balancers, a whole bunch of things. So if you want to listen to what we talked about, um, feel free to go to that first recording um, and listen to it. The link's there for you. Um, so that first recording, we did it in a, a small group of people. So we did not do it in this massive group free for all. We did it with about 10 people invited and they were like the first people to comment on a post on LinkedIn. I think that's how Mohammed did it. So we had 10, 15 people on this first call and it went great. We really were just trying, trying the waters a little bit. Well, now we, we know we're going to do three additional webinars on this topic. Um, we have follow on kind of topics and we've ident identified them in agendas and whatnot. So we know we're going to do three more sessions. Um, at least we planned that. We might do more than that, but we're going to do three. What, what I'm talking about here is I want to invite all of you to this session, to the next session, and the, and the subsequent sessions too. So how we're going to handle that is if you register, the link is here, the link is um, on the show notes, um, and it's going to be pages.zigbits.tech slash private-cloud-dci-webinar. Long worded, right? I could have done something easier. I wasn't thinking. You can yell at me later, send me nasty emails, whatever. Um, but if you click the link, that'll be easy. And the site that loads is this site here. All right. Um, and it is really just a site to um, catch your email address and your name and then put you in a list so that we can email you once we know the date we're going to do this. So as of right now, we don't have the date scheduled. We don't have the time scheduled. This was the previous webinar. Um, I imagine it's going to be later in June. And then once it's scheduled, we will let everyone know about it. All right. And it's free. As always, it's free, free webinar to talk about 
private cloud and data center architectures um, and whatnot. I'm excited about that. That's going to be fun. All right. So we talked about so many things today, so much going on. Um, so let's kind of wrap things up, right? As best as I can. First video call blog, whatever you want to call it. All right. So we talked about Cisco Live. The digital event is this week. I hope you have fun. I hope you enjoy yourselves, learn some stuff, reach out if you have questions, feel free, Twitter, LinkedIn, any of the socials, right? Just email me. Uh, you can't call me, right? But email me, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on LinkedIn. And then if you have some sort of design situation you want to talk about at length, we can always schedule a meeting, right? Um, yeah, so we, we talked about the Cisco Live, the broadcast event. We talked about the on-demand sessions. Then we broke up those 220 sessions into our focused network design session, 19 of them. So we went from 220 to 19. That's a good chunk right there. Um, and then we obviously talked about all of our call to, call to actions, all the things going on, right? Um, I appreciate all of you listening. Uh, we're going to just kind of close out the episode today. Um if you enjoyed today's show, uh, just let me know. Send me a note, add a comment below. Um, send me up an email, right? Feedback at zigbits.tech is the email address. You can email us. Um, just let us know how you did, if how we did, if we didn't do good. I can't, I can't wait. This week's going to be so exciting. Um, I ask all of you, if you're listening, send me a tweet, right? Send me a note. If it's network design or whatever you want to call it, just send me a note. Let me know what you're learning. Let me know what you're watching. Let me know who you're talking to, right? Normally when we're at Cisco Live, we're physically talking to everyone face to face or going to parties or having, you know, what I call nirvana moments, networking nirvana moments at the bar where you're white, you know, you're drawing on a, on a napkin, you're doing some topology diagrams, solving world problems, right? Just let me know. Let me know what you're doing, right? I would, that, that would be the mess. That would, wow, that would mean the most to me. Just let me know you're having fun and having a good time. All right. As always, I appreciate you. Thank you for watching and Lord listening. Until next time. Bye for now.